One of the skills of AP World History is to answer the short answer question. For each SAQ, there's a set of three parts, an A, a B, and a C question. Using these simple strategies that we talk about in this video will help you ace the SAQ. Now, when you write an SAQ, there will be one of the historical thinking skills from the course that will be asked in the question. Perhaps you'll need to compare or contrast or identify a continuity or maybe just an effect of an event. It could even ask you to analyze a source and then find the historical context or the point of view that the author uh, is coming from and it's shaping how the source is being written. Sometimes an SAQ is attached to a source and at other times it's just the question flat out. Let's say you were given a small excerpt from Ashoka's edicts. Ashoka was the emperor of the Mauryan Empire in India and he conquered a substantial part of the Indian subcontinent. Famously, after the Battle of Kalinga, he then converts uh, to Buddhism after feeling great remorse for all the killing that happened in the battle. He then put up across the entire newly unified empire these rock edicts to declare certain things about his rule and reign in bringing peace to the land. So let's look at a sample SAQ by reading this excerpt. Beloved of the gods, King Piyadasi desires that all religions should reside everywhere, for all of them desire, self-control, and purity of heart. But people have various desires and various passions, and they may practice all of what they should or only a part of it. In the past, kings used to go out on pleasure tours by which there was hunting and other entertainment. But 10 years after Beloved of the Gods has been coronated, he went on a tour to the Sambodi and thus instituted Dhamma tours. Questions then regarding this excerpt of this SAQ could look something like this. A, describe the historical situation in which Ashoka wrote this edict. B, identify one way in which Ashoka supported the religious and cultural beliefs of his time. And C, identify one way in which Ashoka challenged the religious and cultural beliefs of this time. So how do you tackle this SAQ? And better yet, how do you ace the SAQ? For each part of the short answer question, A, B, and C, you will need to write about two to five sentences that ace your response. Why do I keep saying that? ACE is an acronym that stands for this. Answer, A, answer the question with a claim. C, cite evidence. And E, explain how that evidence proves your claim. Let's look at question A. Describe the historical situation which Ashoka wrote this edict. For the A and ACE, you would want to literally reword the question into a claim sentence. For example, the historical situation in which Ashoka wrote this edict was, and then I filled this in, during his rule of the Mauryan Empire during the classical era. Then cite evidence to prove you know what you're talking about. Evidence needs to be specific facts, names, events, people, places that prove to the AP graders and to your teacher that you know your stuff. So this is where you need a name drop. BS and fluffy talk have no place here. We will get no points. And we are really just looking for the good stuff. So let's get into the C of citing specific evidence. You could then write something like this. Ashoka expanded his empire across the Indian subcontinent after the Mauryan Empire was founded and unified by Chandragupta Maurya. He won a critical battle at Kalinga, which expanded his rule and led to his conversion to Buddhism. So we cited very specific things then. Then E, explains or links your evidence to your claim that you said at the beginning. Basically, it proves that you're correct. This context shapes the edicts that he wrote and the topic of the statements he proclaimed across the empire. Now let's try that again with B. Identify one way in which Ashoka supported the religious and cultural beliefs of that time. Remember for A in ACE that you want to literally reword this question into a claim sentence like this. One way in which Ashoka supported the religious and cultural beliefs of this time was by continuing to allow for the practice of many religions within India. Okay, so we, we've noted that many religions can be practiced. Now we need to cite evidence. What specific religions were allowed to be practiced in India? Hinduism was the major religion within India, and unlike other religions, was really flexible to other belief systems. Even when Buddhism emerged, 
Hindus incorporated the Buddha into their beliefs as just another deity. E, explain how this links and proves your claim sentence. This shows that Hinduism continued to be practiced in Ashoka's empire, as he even states, quote, all religions should reside everywhere. Notice how we cited specific religions, Buddhism and Hinduism, and connected to the text excerpt, and we even use those magical words, this shows. Other great proving words would be things like, this is demonstrated by, or one example of, or this is proved by. Now, one last example we see. Identify one way in which Ashoka challenged the religious beliefs and cultural practices of the time. So first we answer the question by rewording it into a claim sentence. One way in which Ashoka challenged the religious and cultural beliefs of the time was, fill in the blank, by converting to Buddhism. So one way he challenged this. Cite evidence to prove this. Buddhism was unique to Hinduism in that it focused upon finding truth within oneself and seeking to overcome suffering and desire compared to living out one's duty or dharma and having good karma. E then explains and links your evidence to your claim to prove your point and drive it home. Ashoka challenged the belief specifically by the types of pleasure trips they went on as they traveled to the Bodhi tree in Sam Bodhi, where the Buddha was enlightened, compared to simple hunting trips of previous rulers. See how we connected the text there and put it all together? We cited specific evidence, and then we worked to prove what we knew by tying it back to the excerpt above. We'll be working on SAQs a lot this year, and the goal of it is to answer the question, cite evidence, and explain how you proved your point. This whole creating an argument is what we're going to do a lot in AP World History, and we'll be doing this in other aspects of our course as well, including DBQs and LEQs and how you look at sources within the stimulus-based questions. With practice, you will learn how to prove to be one of the greatest writers and prove the claims that you're writing. Now, a few practical tips to ensure that you're on the right track while you're doing this. Number one, be sure to label your answers with A, B, and C. This is not one mega paragraph, and we should not be reading it in this way. We need to know what specific part of the question that you're answering. Number two, on the AP exam, each letter is worth a single point. You either get it or you don't. People who write vaguely or with fluffy stuff or BS will get a goose egg. So don't do that. We need specific evidence. Number three, this is a timed activity. So try to stay within two to five sentences for each letter. If you write more than that, you're actually stealing time from another question in the future. Next up, on the AP exam, you will also have three SAQ question sets. So that equals nine letters to answer in a total of 40 minutes, which means you have about 13 minutes to complete each set of A, B, and C with four minutes about for each letter. So don't worry. That feels like that's really fast right now, and you will get better with time. And if this is your first SAQ, it probably will take even longer. Another tip, if there's an excerpt, the answer to the question isn't found in the excerpt. Your job is to create an argument and support with evidence from your brain as well as the excerpt. You need outside evidence. Also, you need to go in the order of the questions that you maybe know the most about. If you know the answers to A and C, just label them clearly and write A, C, and leave a spot for you to come back to B to write. You can go out of order. My final tip is this, practice, practice, practice. You will learn this skill over the course of this class. And the other skills like DBQs and LEQs will mirror these foundational skills that you found in the SAQ. Well, I hope this information is helpful for you to ace the SAQ. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to stay tuned for all the future videos that we'll be doing this year to make sure that you're successful in your AP course. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.